The latest craze in our neo-horrific human phase is to mark ourselves into patterns and colours similar to those of a Ming vase. Our canvas-cum skin should firstly be shaved of hair, then washed in solvent so that it's completely bare. Native Tahitians did map and trace with indigo glaze a lifetime's history from their face all the way down to the feet at the base. To start, you chisel with needle, bone and bamboo, mixing the blood and the ink together into what is colloquially termed a tattoo. Maori Mako scarred warriors into woad, raising the skin into ridges, mimicking that of their prey, the lizard and toad. Soldier, slave, nobleman and knave, followed in the inky footsteps of the Polynesian brave, it became their must-have crave. Romans drew the blue onto their criminal crew until the Emperor Constantine did decree that God's likeness must remain stain-free. Coptic Christians stigmated the Jerusalem cross onto their humble skin just to let the other pagan dog know which god they carried within. Egyptian brides of the dead were covered in henna red, then placed into the burial tombs a sexual fodder on which the afterlife king could be fed. Ancient mariners sailed the seven seas of brine to help pass their time. They inked each other in gunpowder, and their own urine. By 1942, the Nazis camp stamped the numbers blue onto Gypsy and Jew in order to keep a track of who was who. What was once the stamp of a tramp or criminal class had now become the must-have for most of our mammalian mass. The colour graffite of the circus freak is now adorning the aristocrat, royalty, and even the supermodel chic. Ten thousand years of Polynesian man, who mapped his face into that pictorial plan, and the world has now become its biggest fan. Sinister or sensual, sacred or secular, the woad-coloured woman or boudica blue man has now been accepted by God, even your little old grand.